Hello, today we'll be going to practice questions 71 to 80 for the CompTIA Sizer Plus exam. Let's begin. While reviewing web server logs, a security analyst found the following line. Which of the following malicious activities was attempted? The correct answer is D. Cross-site scripting. The line is a classic example of cross-site scripting. It attempts to inject a VB script based payload into a web page to execute code in the browser of anyone who loads it. This targets client side execution and is typical of cross site scripting attacks. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Command injection. Command injection targets server side shell commands, not client side scripts like this one. B. XML injection. XML injection manipulates XML data or queries not HTML JavaScript content like in this example. C. SSRF. SSRF tricks a server into making unauthorized requests on behalf of the attacker. This is not what's happening here. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A security analyst at a company called Acme Commercial notices there is outbound traffic to a host IP that resolves to HTTPS office 365password.acme.co. The site's standard VPN logon page is www.acme.com slash logon. Which of the following is most likely true? The correct answer is D. A social engineering attack is underway. The URL https office 365 passwordacmeco is suspicious and designed to look like a legitimate corporate service but it uses typo-squatted domain, which is a common technique in phishing and social engineering attacks. This likely indicates an attempt to trick users into entering their credentials on a fake login page. Why the other options are incorrect? A. This is a normal password change URL. If it were legitimate, it would use the company's official domain, not a misleading one like acme.co. B. The Security Operations Center is performing a routine password audit. Password audits are internal and wouldn't involve outbound traffic to an external suspicious domain. C. A new VPN gateway has been deployed. A legitimate VPN gateway would still use the company's official domain and be communicated to users securely, not discovered incidentally in logs. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A security analyst is performing vulnerability scans on the network. The analyst installs a scanner appliance, configures the subnets to scan, and begins the scan of the network. Which of the following would be missing from a scan performed with this configuration? The correct answer is B. Registry key values. A network-based vulnerability scan using a scanner appliance can detect IP addresses, open ports, and even operating system versions through fingerprinting techniques. However, it cannot access registry key values, as that would require authenticated access and an agent or credential scan with deeper access to the system. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Operating system version. This can often be determined via OS fingerprinting or banner grabbing during unauthenticated scans. C. Open ports. Standard output of any network vulnerability scanner. D. IP address. Basic and required for performing any scan. It's how hosts are discovered. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A security analyst discovers an LFI vulnerability that can be exploited to extract credentials from the underlying host. Which of the following patterns can the security analyst use to search the web server logs for evidence of exploitation of that particular vulnerability? The correct answer is A. Etsy Shadow LFI vulnerabilities allow attackers to read files from the server's file system by manipulating input parameters. The Etsy Shadow file is a common target in LFI attacks on Unix, Linux systems because it contains hashed user passwords. Evidence of attempts to access this file in the logs strongly suggests LFI exploitation. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Curl localhost. This is a command line action for making HTTP requests. It's more indicative of command injection or SSRF, not LFI. C. Print env. 
This syntax suggests command injection using a semicolon. It's not associated with file inclusion. D. Cat proc self. This may indicate information gathering via command injection or SSRF, but by itself is not a clear LFI pattern like at C Shadow. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A company is in the process of implementing a vulnerability management program. Which of the following scanning methods should be implemented to minimize the risk of OT ICS devices malfunctioning due to the vulnerability identification process? The correct answer is B. Passive scanning. Passive scanning monitors network traffic without actively probing or interacting with devices. This is the safest method for OT and ICS environments, where active scans can disrupt fragile or legacy systems. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Non-credential scanning. This still involves active probing, which can cause malfunctions in sensitive OT ICS devices. C. Agent-based scanning. This requires installing software agents, which is often unsupported or risky on OT ICS devices. D. Credential scanning. Although safer than non-credential scanning, it still involves active interaction with systems, which can be risky in OT environments. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A company receives a penetration test report summary from a third party. The report summary indicates a proxy has some patches that need to be applied. The proxy is sitting in a rack and is not being used, as the company has replaced it with a new one. The CVE score of the vulnerability on the proxy is a 9.8. Which of the following best practices should the company follow with this proxy? The correct answer is B. Decommission the proxy. Since the proxy is no longer in use and still has a critical vulnerability, the best practice is to decommission it, leaving unused, unpatched equipment connected to the network poses an unnecessary security risk, even if it's not actively serving traffic. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Leave the proxy as is. This is poor security hygiene. Unused but connected systems can be exploited as entry points. C. Migrate the proxy to the cloud. Migrating a deprecated and vulnerable system is risky and unnecessary. D. Patch the proxy. While patching improves security, there is no reason to maintain or secure an unused device. Decommissioning is more appropriate. Therefore, the correct answer is B. An analyst is examining events in multiple systems but is having difficulty correlating data points. Which of the following is most likely the issue with the system? The correct answer is C. Time synchronization. Time synchronization is essential for correlating logs and events across multiple systems. If system clocks are not aligned, log timestamps will not match, making it difficult to track events across devices and identify attack sequences accurately. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Access rights. Insufficient access could block viewing logs but that wouldn't cause misalignment of data points. B. Network segmentation. This affects communication between systems, not the ability to correlate already available event data. D. Invalid playbook. An invalid playbook may hinder incident response steps, but it doesn't explain correlation issues across logs. Therefore, the correct answer is C. An analyst recommends that an EDR agent collect the source IP address make a connection to the firewall, and create a policy to block the malicious source IP address across the entire network automatically. Which of the following is the best option to help the analyst implement this recommendation? The correct answer is A. SOAR. SOAR platforms are designed to automate and orchestrate security operations. In this case, the analyst's recommendation involves automating a response, detecting a malicious source IP with an EDR, communicating with a firewall, and pushing a blocking policy across the network. This is a classic use case for SOAR. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Seam. A seam collects and correlates log data, but does not automate response actions like pushing firewall policies. C. SLA. An SLA defines service expectations and response times. It's not a tool or platform for automation. D. IOC. 
An IOC is a data point, such as a malicious IP or file hash. It's part of detection, not the automation or response mechanism. Therefore, the correct answer is A. An end-of-life date was announced for a widely used OS. A business critical function is performed by some machinery that is controlled by a PC, which is utilizing the OS that is approaching the end-of-life date. Which of the following best describes a security analyst's concern? The correct answer is A. Any discovered vulnerabilities will not be remediated. The primary security concern with an OS reaching end of life is that it will no longer receive security patches or updates, meaning any new vulnerabilities discovered will remain unpatched, leaving the system permanently exposed to threats. Why the other options are incorrect? B. An outage of machinery would cost the organization money. While true, this is more of an operational business risk than a specific security concern. C. Support will not be available for the critical machinery. The machinery itself may still function, and the issue is with the OS, not necessarily with the hardware or vendor support for the machinery. D. There are no compensating controls in place for the OS. This may be a secondary concern, but it assumes compensating controls are absent. The root concern is the lack of future patches regardless of compensating controls. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Which of the following describes the best reason for conducting a root cause analysis? The correct answer is D. The root cause analysis identifies the contributing items that facilitated this event. The primary purpose of a root cause analysis is to identify the underlying factors or conditions that led to an incident. This helps prevent recurrence by addressing not just the symptoms, but the actual causes. Why the other options are incorrect? A. The root cause analysis ensures that proper timelines were documented. Timeline documentation is part of incident analysis, but is not the main goal of RCA. B. The root cause analysis allows the incident to be properly documented for reporting. While RCA contributes to documentation, the core function is analysis, not reporting. C. The root cause analysis develops recommendations to improve the process. This is a result of the RCA, not its primary purpose. Identifying causes come first, recommendations follow. Therefore, the correct answer is D. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.